Hello, everybody. This is round two of us filming our video over our latest trip, our, our latest scavenger hunt across the United States. As I said in my update video yesterday, this is just the beginning. And I miss you so much, Stephanie. It's weird. I miss you like too. <laughs> I hate this whole Zooming thing now. It's like, you know, we're, we're, we're better in person. <laughs> we are so much better in person. We're fun. <laughs> we're really fun. Um, anyway, but before we get into the nitty gritty of it all, I do want to put out a special announcement. So yes, I am aware that my numbers on YouTube have been suppressed. We're all aware of that. So I know that my numbers are actually higher than, um, than what they're telling me just mathematically. It's impossible and they're it's higher. But anyway, I am just a few hundred shy right now of 50,000. So I talked to Stephanie this morning before we hit record. Um, when we get to 60,000, when Esoteric Atlanta gets to 60,000 subscribers, I would like to do a giveaway. I am going to draw a name from all of my subscribers. It'll just be a random pick uh, to, uh, gift somebody an hour session with Stephanie. Um, that's what, that's the goal to get to 60,000 and Stephanie agreed. And, uh, so, so yeah, so 10 more thousand to go and I will be giving somebody a reading with Stephanie. And to add to that, I have a, um, wonderful person. I did a reading on about a month ago and She's probably going to watch this because I know she watches our videos avidly, but I think her name is Rochelle. I could be, I can be completely butchering that. Um, and she has the means to um, donate a one hour reading or two half an hour reading sessions with me um, out of her own pocket per month. She wanted to do that to pay it forward. She was part of um, the United States military and now retired. She has the means to do it. She wants to support my business and also um, support others who cannot afford a reading with me, which I normally do drop my prices depending on their story. Um, I have done um, discounted readings for people who maybe are on fixed income and stuff like that because um, obviously, um, you know, uh, the, in the spiritual community, we're, we're told like by, you know, certain communities in the spiritual community sector, I guess, um, that are more programmed that, you know, to martyr yourself, um, for, martyr for stuff yourself. like that, but don't martyr yourself. Um, because, uh, like you said, Bryce, that's kind of like a polarized negative kind of a thing because it's, it's an unequal exchange of energy. Now my prices are actually really low compared to any tarot reader I've ever seen for an hour reading. Most people do charge up in the 200 to $300 range. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I have told you, you need to up your prices because you're that good. But and I'm not ready to do that. Yet. I know <laughs> because you know, I'm, I've been doing okay. Like I, I've been able to, it's just enough to be able to pay my bills. And yeah, I was able to save enough money to go on my trip. Which honestly, did I really spend my money wildly? No, I didn't. No, neither of us. No, did. no, I I only paid for my own food and I paid for really cheap hotel room here and there. Most of my trip to stay lodging was pretty much, you know, I stayed with you mm -hmm. a, a few days and um, Bonnie a few days, so that didn't cost money to me. And I was very um, good about not spending my money like crazy. I didn't go out to eat all the time. I went to Walmart and got a macaroni and cheese bowl. Okay, like, yeah. And I totally regretted it after, <laughs> but you know, like I'm pretty simple on the road. Like I don't need fancy, fancy stuff and fancy hotel. And the hotel we stayed at in DC was very simple. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, I'm not, and I, and I think this is something you and I, we have a lot in common, but one thing we both have in common is that we're not money hungry people. Mm -hmm. We just want to, I, 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 and I've laughed about this before. This is why I've always dated poor men. I've never cared. That's just something I just don't even Consider. I don't think about it either. I like I money to me. It's just, okay. It's freaking money. Like as long as I'm living comfortably enough to pay my bills and then have maybe a little extra to take my son bowling or go to the beach and do something here and there to kind of get out of the house. Sometimes that's all I really care about. Same. I'm not looking to get rich. I've had a couple of people, um, really go off on me. Oh, you shouldn't be charging for your services. Okay. Well, I refuse to get something in my arm number one. And I refuse to work a job that requires that. So I have to put food on the table. And 
how rude of you to say yeah, something. And I'm going to, I want to say, cause I said this to you, Stephanie, cause I get this with yoga all the time. Yeah. That is the most abusive and spiritually ignorant comment you can ever make to somebody who's working their ass off to try to help people. I get that with yoga all the time that I should be teaching for free. Well, if I taught for free, I can't teach. Because I too have a human life. I too have to pay bills. I too have to eat. I too have to keep the lights turned on. I too have to pay rent for the business where I teach you yoga. So no, I can't martyr myself and be homeless yeah. just to teach you for free. My teacher in India charges a tuition. It costs me money to go to India to study, to learn, to then bring it back and teach it. Now, like you with our, with yoga, I will work with people if they need me to work with them, but, but it's, it's an exchange of energy. Yes. It's the same with tarot card readings. It's the same with Reiki sessions. We, it's an exchange of energy. You can't just pull from someone, pull from someone, pull from someone and give nothing back in return. Yeah. That is the, that's most how money is. It's just exchange of energy it's so that somebody can that. live and make ends meet and everything. And I think, I think there's this stigma behind tarot card readers that, oh, well, you're just reading a bunch of cards. Like, that's not really hard to do. Why, why would you charge this money for it? But I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I, the, reading the tarot cards comes easy to me. But what happens is it's, it's a drain on my energy. Yeah, it's your channel. I, yeah, when you're channeling somebody, that really, truly sucks the energy out of you like you worked a nine-to-five job. Yeah, it does. It does. We get that in yoga as well. I'll be exhausted after teaching someone because I put my hands on And there's on projection. Them. There, some people project to you. So sometimes I do a reading and it's like somebody who's projecting, projecting, projecting. And they're, they're an energy vampire. Now, most of the people I've done readings on fabulous people. Like I had one reading the other day when I was like, wow, like I felt energized after because the person was so high vibing. You know what I mean? Um, and... Uh, so people need to realize if you're projecting everything onto somebody, you're draining them. You're an energy vampire. You have to be very, very mindful of how you, what you're doing with your energy onto somebody else. And so, um, and it's not that I hate these people or dislike these people. It's just like, I have to be very mindful of my energy. Um, and someone who is spiritually in tuned understands how energy works that way. Yeah. And so um, when you are paying somebody, that's the energy exchange. Yeah. I'm not just going to sacrifice my energy for free. Yeah. No, because that's a negative. That's in to the law of one. That is polarizing negative. To be a martyr is to polarize mm -hmm. negative. But if someone is literally disabled on low income, really having a hard time, guess what? I'm not an asshole. I, I will work, work with you. With, I will work with you. That's how we are in yoga too. I'll work with you on prices if that's something that's generally mm -hmm. hurting you because you're coming to me with an honest issue. Mm -hmm. And we, so we work from there. But yes, I saw somebody comment that on one of your shows once about how you shouldn't be charging and I almost lost my shit because that is one of the most psychotic and narcissistic mind thoughts to have that somebody owes you something that someone should mm -hmm. give of themselves to help you with you not giving in return. That is so selfish. And that is so spiritually low vibrational to have that thought. Mm -hmm. um, and I know most people understand that. Like, I get that. Like, we've had a couple of people. I've talked to Shanti about this at Aquarius Rising Africa. We've had a couple of people get really mad because some of you, us have monetized our channels. Well, it's the same thing. Would well, you like the entertainment or not? Exactly. I can't. I, this working on this show on esoteric and i love it i love it i this is the thing i want to do for the rest of my life i love doing this um but it is definitely it's like a 12 hour to 16 hour day and i work most weekends too because it's not just sitting in front of the cam camera filming it's editing it's researching it's scheduling it's working with all different so there's a lot involved and mm. i am literally at my desk all day long you are yeah and, and so if, if you don't want my channel monetized, then I can't do the channel. I have to go yeah. back to teaching because I still have to keep a reason. <laughs> and I know most people understand that. Most people absolutely understand that. In fact, I had one person say once, and I almost cried when I saw this. She was like, I actually watched all the whole commercial 
just to make sure you get you get more uh, revenue from that. What a sweet person that, that is. So is. Sweet. Like I was like, I don't do that. I hit skip. <laughs> but you know, that was so kind. So I know that most people understand that. You know, we're we're using and 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 you know, I think people are under this <laughs> illusion that for somehow those of us who have a platform or some people, not everybody, we've, we've pulled ourselves away from the matrix, but we haven't like Stephanie and I are still living under the same laws and rules that everybody else is. We still have to yeah. use the money we have. We still have to use our banks. We still have to pay the same bills. When the day comes that the matrix is totally taken down, will be the same day for all of us. And so I just want to let you guys know for those who continue to watch and, and, you know, don't mind the monetization, then I appreciate you guys because you guys understand that that's what is literally keeping the kitchen. Yeah. And my patrons, my patrons are badasses. You guys, my patrons were literally the people that helped me get all this footage that we're going to be putting together for you guys because you guys are the real rock stars of this channel, the, the patrons and producers. So thank you guys so, 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 so much. So anyway, enough of that. Um, but anyway, 60,000 60, subscribers, subscribers, we will be, I will be drawing a name. Uh, for a subscriber to get a free reading with Stephanie. So what, why don't we do this, Stephanie? How does this sound? Since your lovely client has offered that, why don't we do, I will draw one person that I will cover for a 60 minute reading with you. And then I'll draw two more people for 30 minute readings with you. So be a total of three people. Three is the magic yep. number, right? All right, cool. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, let's get into the uh, the fun of the show. So, Stephanie, I know you, a lot of you guys caught us on Zublix channel, The Dark Outpost. Uh, was that yesterday we did that? Where yes. we recapped a lot of our trip to D.C. We are going to be on with Aquarius Rising Africa on Monday at 10 o'clock Eastern time to also recap as well. So we don't want to beat a dead horse. So we're going to touch on some stuff and then join us on those platforms for more of the details because Stephanie, I have had so many people, not so many, a few emails I've received from some subscribers that want us to dish on what each of us are like in real life. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Yeah. So um, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Oh, it doesn't matter to me. Is this, <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a roasting of each other, but the opposite. <laughs> yeah, Cause honestly, it felt like, like hanging out with you in real life um, felt very normal. Like we've known yeah. each other for thousands of yeah. years. It just, it well, wasn't it, like, oh, we're meeting for the first time. It's like, oh, I've, I've known you for years. Yeah. Here you are. Yeah. 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 Here you are. Well, number one, actually, I do want to go first. <laughs> So my first impression, so I'm, I, I'm getting something out of my car. I get to your mom's house and all of a sudden I say, I hear, Hey, like, and I looked at you and I'm like, Oh shit. She's a lot shorter than I thought. <laughs> she's, she's, she's my size almost. I'm and, five four. Uh, my mom thinks I'm five, five. No, no. I'm like five, no. four. My driver's license says five, four. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you seem taller on camera because I'm skinny. You're like you're like this itty bitty thing. I'm like, very bony and very skinny. Itty bitty, but like you, but you're healthy skinny. Like you don't look too skinny to me. But you're like this itty bitty thing, and and it was just like, um, oh wow, she's she's much shorter than I expected. And you already told me your height, and I was trying to like, I'm like, is she shorter than that? <laughs> like, yeah. so. I mean, there was one day my mother, we were at my mother's house and my mother couldn't reach something and I had to be the one to go take it down because yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's, I, I, I'm long. I have long limbs. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, I don't know. Um, and then Tyler was walking with us all the time and he was like towering over the two of us. Here's this 15 year old and he's very like, he's, he's thin, but he's very like, you know, how would you describe him? Like he, his physique, like he's just like a big kid. He's skinny, but he's like a big kid. He, and he's still growing. I think, I don't think he's done growing. I oh, think no, he's, he's not even, yeah. done, he's not even near done. I think he's going to be really tall. Yeah. I mean, my grandfather was six, five. My um, dad is like six, two, six, three, maybe six, four. Um, the Watson side of my family is very, my great aunt, my grandfather's sister was six feet tall. Um, and they're big people. They have like big hands. And I remember I was in high school and my mom's family, my mother's like five, two, she's tiny. So 
I'm mm-hmm. used to seeing like a small woman with a t- really tall guy. Cause that's how my parents were. My dad's like six, three, six, four. My mom was like five, two. Uh, but I remember I was sitting at my, the house I grew up in. There was like this, like a uh, breakfast, like bar thing with the stools. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, my granddad, my dad's dad, the six, five, the one that comes through in the channeling a lot, Ed Watson, he came into our house and I was standing kind of like, I had my hands on the counter and he went and sat at the bar stool at the breakfast little area. And my hands were like right there. And he grabbed my hand, my grandfather, he grabbed my hand and he like looked at my hand and he was like, I'm so glad that you and your sister got your bodies from your mama's family. (laughs) Oh, he was like, look at these beautiful girly hands. He was like, I'm just so happy. My granddaughters did not get the Watson giant (laughs) Uh, as girls, as girls, you know, if, if 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 we had been boys, it might've been different, but as girls, he was like, I'm just so grateful. You and your sister are, have the bright, my mom's maiden name is Bryce, the Bryce family, um, structuring, and not the Watson mm-hmm. family structuring, which pissed my dad off. Cause my, I always felt like my dad was in competition with my mom's family. Like anytime anybody said, Oh my God, you look so much like, like your mom's mom or something. My dad would get in and be like, no, she looks like my family. He was very kind of weirdly possessive over our genetics. That's really <laughs> weird. Yeah. But I, you know, every time like my niece and nephew are born, we're always like, are they going to, are they going to end up being six, five, you know, cause that, those genes are still floating around. Um, but yeah, uh, but I do think I do have the struggle. I mean, I'm, I'm very like, you know, you see my, you're lanky, are- you're long and lanky, but you're, you're still tiny. Yeah. I'm probably still very tiny, like 110 pounds, maybe 115 pounds, something like that. I mean, David laughed about that. Didn't he about my body f- frame and my boobs? Oh yeah. Yeah. I got boobs. <laughs> They're real. They're very real. I'm like a so she's all boy. like tiny body and then boobs <laughs> and they're real they're totally real i got the stretch marks to prove them they're they're totally real it's um yeah i'm like a 32 double d <laughs> <my boobs. laughs> so yeah so that i mean that was my first like thought was holy shit she's really short but like she's like so tiny and then boobs <laughs> <laughs> um and then um what, what I will say is it's like, you're fun on camera, but <clears throat> you're really fun in real life. Like guys, you think she's got a perverted sense of humor on camera. You guys got no, no clue. No clue. Hilarious. I had really to actually funny. watch myself because Tyler would be like in the back seat and then you'd be like, no, it's okay. He doesn't understand. <laughs> or he'd have his like noise canceling headphones on listening to like, blasting acdc or something like that because he's into like all the old rock and roll bands and everything he's always blasting music like all the time 24 7 um and so yeah like oh yeah we we we, we were fun we were fun, we're fun. but um we're fun. i think we're pretty i mean i i struggle with anxiety with myself <laughs> i have anxiety issues just with me because of ptsd and i have that catastrophe thinking all that kind of stuff however but that went away though I feel like I was, with other people, I'm really laid back. I feel like I'm, and I think you are too. I think we we're both very laid back, very yeah. go with the flow. Like you um, said, we traveled well together. Absolutely. You know, you know we, we had the, the same goals on the trip and, you know, we were on the same wavelength with everything. And um, what I will say is this, and I think this is super important. Uh, you know, Bryce is the same person off camera that you see on camera. And, um, you know, we're, we're not rich or anything. We're not in a stu- uh, professional studios doing this. Um, she works out of her tiny little bedroom. She hasn't seen my studio yet, which is, so my studio is actually an old studio of an old cartoonist who used to live in my home. That's which cool. I'm, I need to actually go and figure out if he's um, part of the club or not, because um, this illustrator, and I forgot his name. He was the illustrator of the golden books. Maybe we should so do a very, dive. yeah, that might my, be the house, house, my house is haunted. My yeah, house I was is like, haunted. you have a few sphere. I know you, your house is haunted. Maybe we should, when I'm there, we should do some, um, oh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to investigate my house. Yeah. Like I, I want like a ghost box and everything. Like, and I have the ghost hunters that have an actual TV show. They came to my house. I, I hired them to come here because they'll come to your house for free. 
Oh, wow. It, it's volunteer work. And they're based out of Warwick, Rhode Island, which is 45 minutes down the street from me. So they came here and the two main people who are part of TAPS, which is their, what their name is, yeah, I yeah. forgot what it stands for. Um, they no longer um, go to the houses anymore because I think they got reeled into the club po possibly um, because it's a TV show. Yeah. And one of Tyler's old teachers, um, the one of his special ed teachers, because he was in um, a you know, school program because he, um, you know, was on a spectrum and everything like that. Autism spectrum um, is one of the people from that TV show. Very cool dude. Very, very cool dude. Andy Andrews from that show. Um, and so um, he uh, said, I mean, I'm not going to say what he said because I, I, I don't want to um, put anything on him or anything like that. So I'm going to be very careful how I say this. But um, there is so changes happened to that show as time went on and seasons went on if you get my gist yeah. so uh, with money um so he actually left the tv show because of that he wasn't reeled into it so you have volunteers that are now part of taps so they came up to my house they they got a lot of footage and i was there the entire invest investigation and they would be and i i saw everything i heard everything boots walking across my floor knocking on the wall now the spirits have calmed down since that was when we first moved in, but we'll have to do an investigation on it. But this particular studio was the illustrator's studio where he did all of his artwork. So I then we redid the entire inside of here. We put new flooring in because it was carpet and it was all yuck. So we put in um, like Pergo in here and and so and stuff like that. And I whitewashed the walls and everything and I made it, you know, more feminine looking. And um, now I've created it into my own studio. And it was originally my art studio. So I did a lot of painting in here. I did a lot of my jewelry making in here and stuff like that. But I've now created it into my YouTube studio. Yeah. And I know because I, you, you, you walk around <coughs> on the phone a lot in and out of your house. So I, I kind of have an idea of what it looks like. But yeah, I mean, for those people who have created conspiracies around us, like there's no conspiracy. I'm literally like, this is the wall. My desk. I want to say something. I got to cut you off. Bryce is not Princess Diana. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> there's no mask. There's no mask. No, like she's Bryce. Like she, there's been rumors about that. No, she is freaking Bryce. Like there's no getting, I got to sneeze. Sorry. That's okay. My nose has been running <laughs> back in the city. So you're fine. <laughs> Excuse me. Whew. Anyways, somebody didn't want me to say that. Well, the funny thing is, is like when I first heard the rumors that I was Princess Diana, I laughed at first about it, but then it got, then it really started to piss me off. Yeah. Because I, I am just Bryce. Like that is, I am who I am. Like there's, yeah. this is my legal birth name. And we went through you know, average lives, you know, yeah. you know, we and, went, we're just ordinary people that are trying to help people on this journey. And you know, somewhere down the line before we incarnated in this lifetime, we agreed to make a YouTube channel. We, that's why we got the download to create a YouTube channel. Um, and we're, we're just people. We're just, we're not anybody famous. We're just people. So there's this um, fantasy, I think, because we're so used to Hollywood. And there's a fantasy, like, thinking on, oh, well, she's on screen. So I got to meet her and I got to be friends with her because she's on a TV screen or a YouTube screen or whatever. And it's like, we got to get out of that thinking like, okay, yeah, we are pretty fun in person, but, but I would, and I, and I asked you that at one point, Stephanie, I was like, do I have an ego? Do I, cause we know people in this, in this community that have gotten big egos and are walking around like they're, they're the Mac daddy, the shit, you know, and it drives that actually really is a turn off for me. Like that's yeah, such it is a big turn off for me. You're a YouTuber. Um, and I asked you that at one point, Stephanie, do I act like I have, do you, do I walk around with an ego? I mean, we all have ego at some point or another, but I will say you're pre like knowing you in person and everything. You're very humble. Thank you. Same to you too. Because I, I even laugh, like it's, it's, um, cause we were talking to talk, I, I have I'm almost 11,000 subscribers on our followers on Twitter. And I've been there. I was very slow to the Twitter game. I had a Twitter account for a while, but I never checked it. And, and I said, to, I said to somebody like, what? And I was like, I, it's just my channel. Like that's, you know, and, um, it's, yeah. I, I, when, when truthers out there have an ego, it really pisses me off. Like when they walk around, I've heard stories of 
you know, truthers wanting bodyguards and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I did mention in one of my videos that if we did a meet and greet, I would want to hire security, but that is because of the threats that have been against myself, literal threats that I've had to go to the military and fill out affidavits for. And I, I, I genuinely care. I genuinely care about every single person that would be at that event. I want everybody to have fun. I want everybody to feel safe. And that would be the only reason why I would hire yeah. a security. It agent. has nothing to do with ego or wanting to feel important. And I went into this whole thing, not to get famous, not to get important, but just to present what I felt was important important in this battle that we've been in and provide some sort of uplifting entertainment. Um, and because I, the thing is with me, like I've, and this isn't to make anybody feel sorry for me, but I've always, I've go, always gone throughout my life, like having important words of wisdom, important things to say, but never was heard. And this was God letting me know. Yeah. Because you needed to not be heard at the time. Now is your time to be heard. So Obviously, God has um, given me a, a platform so that I can present um, to an audience, the, the correct audience who are drawn to my channel, um, maybe some words of wisdom. And now I do the cards. So wisdom comes out through the cards and everything when I do like collective readings and such. Um, and so it's not to like, I don't sit there and go, oh, I'm, I'm famous now or I'm this or I'm that. It's just like I still live an ordinary life and I still have ordinary bills to pay and I still have a lot less money than a lot of people in America have. Um, I've never I've always struggled financially. I'm still struggling financially. And um, until the world levels out financially, I will be stuck where I am. I'm not getting rich off of this. And nor do I care to because honestly, I'm OK living a very simplistic lifestyle. I'm not into like, I can, I, I don't want a private jet. I don't want a mansion. Um, those are just empty things. Those are things that are not going to bring balance and happiness to your life. What's going to bring balance and happiness to our lives is really doing the work on ourselves spiritually. Absolutely. And I've, I've said this before. I mean, I, I grew up, I mean, you, you saw the, the school I went to. I grew up wealthy. With I grew uh, up, I grew up like not wanting for anything myself. Yeah. So and I actually have a lot of anxiety. I mean, you went to the school. I drove you by the school that I went to. And there's obviously. It's awful. It's awful. awful. It's, it's one of the top 10 private boarding schools in America. That's their big claim to fame. There's a lake with swans on it. But it, it and I think my parents, I don't know. I, I think my parents paid more for me to go to high school than they did for my college education, which to me is like, LOL, what? But being around that environment, this is old money. This is in the South. It's a lot of like generational wealth. There's a lot of stress there. There's a lot of pressure, even for the kids that to feel that intense uh, burden of, of having to continue as life has gotten harder and harder and harder. And I always, I always was the black sheep. Always. I wasn't a bad kid. I didn't do, never did. I did normal kid stuff, but I always saw spirits. I obviously have been very open about hearing being clear audio, hearing Mary, Mary Magdalene speak to me. Um, I always was interested in something bigger in life. I, th I think I knew, you know, and growing up, people would be like, make a 10 year plan, make a five year plan, whatever. And I never felt like that was necessary because I think I always knew that something was going to happen that was going to derail everything. Yeah. And it's funny, our friend Bonnie, and I posted this on my Twitter account this morning. Um, our friend Bonnie sent me a video of 10 signs that you're, I watched that one. too. Well, and part of that was that you, you just always never really fit in. You didn't want the, yeah. the I get very um, agitated with like the same schedule all the time. I can't imagine. And that's what I loved about my job as a yoga teacher or, uh, running a shala here is that I would go back and forth to India and I would work early in the morning and then I would teach philosophy I teach courses. And then I'd have all day to like do other things. And I would go to India back and forth and I was rescuing street dogs and I was, you know, helping the kids in the slums. So there was excitement there. I needed that. Um, now, of course, I know that that information I learned is now pivotal for this time for the great awakening, because that's one thing that the controllers have done is they have severed true spirituality. Um, I know. And they talked about that. Just your presence pisses people off. And I, that's true. I mean, look at you or bless your heart, Stephanie, 
you were on my Twitter the other day trying to defend me against some negative comments, and we've been. Oh my even, god! We're not the even going to respond. Trolls are out of control, and they're all Christians. You know, it's, there are some people that. So there was one person commenting on your Twitter that I think is not even just awake. Like, you must have just popped up on their feed, and they were triggered by what oh, yeah. something you said, and I was just like, and you're like, um. You apparently don't know anything about the satanic. I was like, oh my God, I think you're new here. Go do some research. But of course, I should have known that people are, who are not awake yet don't know how to research because they will the only Google stuff. And it's like, you're not going to oh, find anything. That's not, you're not going to find anything on Google. Like, that's not how you research. But yeah, I actually blocked that person. And I've blocked if most of the people I have to block, unfortunately, are Christians because, um, you know, we get name called. I, I learned now that apparently the uh, Christian cult, you can't be spiritual now. Apparently that's one of the rules is if you're spiritual, you're satanic, which I'm like, is it all religion about spirituality? It's just like, okay, well, we're not fitting. You're not fitting within their, their boundaries or their walls or whatever. Their, their walls of um, control. Yeah. So apparently you are demon possessed. Yeah. You know, that's not, what, not that's, what that's, and that's what's that's what I think Stephanie are trying to do in a very loving way is show it's in, in we both grew up Christian, so that's where we know the most uh, about the fiction. I just came into. out of that world. Like like literally got, the last time I stepped foot in a church was a year ago. Yeah. I that stopped is. going to church July of last year. Twenty two years. And <laughs> I came out of church not because my brain said stop going to church. I heard the voice of God tell me to stop going. And that's what I think, because I know there are good people in the church. I know, and they're, they're heavily oh. programmed. And I'm trying to point out that this, and it's so funny because I was thinking, you know, the liberals react in a certain way. They get very ab abusive. They say, they call us names. If it's we no say different, them, though. It's no different from the church. No, the no Christians different. are acting the same way. They're yeah. reacting the same way as the liberals. Yeah. It's the like, same, it's that programming from the cabal. And I'm like, if you, I, 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 that's some heavy cognitive dissonance. If you don't, if you know that the government's messed up, school's messed up, medicine's messed up, but you think the church is not, yeah, that's heavy cognitive dissonance. And when you see the way that they react like that, when they react identical to the liberals, you know, it's programming. It's literal programming. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know. I know a few people who are still going to church and they're beautiful people. And you know what? I, I can't, I'm not going to tell people what they need to believe or how they need to believe because that's their own spiritual journey. And that's okay. If, if I can help somebody um, start to understand how um, the manipulation works in that world, because I was there and I believe God allowed me to experience it so that I can help people going forward, understand the control mechanisms. Um, because, uh, I mean, I let it control my life. I let the fear control my life. I mean, I talked about this multiple times, how I couldn't even drive from point A to point B without feeling like I was going to um, die in the car. Be in, 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 like, one of my biggest uh, fears about traveling that I had to get over was getting in, getting in, sitting in my car and driving, like, hundreds of miles and weaving in and out of traffic. And um, I had talked to you and Shanti before we did a video on Aquarius Rising Africa about my fear and how there was a, a feeling of lack of security. Like, what do I do if my car breaks down in the middle of, oh, my God, if I broke down in Pennsylvania, I would have cried. Pennsylvania was awful. Sorry to those who live in eastern Pennsylvania, but that was horrible. I literally thought I was going to die. That was horrible. Just saying. Um, in New York City. Never again. I will I will take a train through New York City, but I will never drive through New York City ever again. I don't care how brave I am in the freaking car. That was awful. <laughs> awful. So I'm um, I'm not used to city traveling. I live in I mean, I don't live in like a, a very rural area. I mean, there's there's places around me and, <clears throat> you know, but I'm still a small town girl, which every time I say that, I think of Journey, um, <laughs> that song. <laughs> don't you stop believing. But you were afraid to drive because you were afraid you're going to get in a car accident. You were I like, was hell? petrified. Well, yeah, when I was in the church, I was petrified to, to die in a car accident and go to hell because I almost did die in a car accident. I almost rear-ended a tractor trailer going about 65 miles per hour because the tractor trailer stopped midway on the freaking highway and the sun got in my eyes at sunset and blinded me for a second there. So I had to slam on my brakes and I 
did, I did one of these in the middle of the highway. I had like literally 10 cars coming at me the opposite direction. Cause I spun out on the highway after I slammed down my brakes and I'm facing on oncoming traffic. And I knew I was protected because they all stopped and they're all yelling out their window. Are you okay? Well, let's pause there because this is what you, know, they get this fear in your head that you, you know, they try to control you that way, but your date of death is already written in your soul contract. Exactly. And if I had known that, be like, okay. Like, so that I had to shift my mentality but going on this trip, it was more or less a fear of not necessarily dying on the road. It was a fear of breaking down or something. And like, what do I do? And I only have this amount of money. So what do I do if this happens to me? And so I had to really overcome that fear. And by the end of the trip, I'm just driving like, whatever. And you actually drove <clears throat> with me. Yep. And, that, and that's that. another fear of mine is being a passenger. And I like to fine. be in, and I like to be in control of the steering wheel. I don't like people driving me around. I like to be the driver because I trust my own driving. I'm very well aware of my surroundings when I'm driving. So for me to be a passenger is very scary for me. And a lot of people who have had me in their car as a passenger and me as a passenger know that. So this is a fear I had to overcome. And when I drove with you, I said to you, I'm like, well, congratulations. You're one of the first people I've ever been a passenger in their car. And I was actually very relaxed because you're you seem even, relaxed, even though you bopped and weaved in that uh, traffic. Like I trusted your driving. <clears throat> I think I'm a I good driver. To, and you are. And then I learned to bop and weave. <laughs> yeah. By the end of it, because I got in the car, you drove into D.C. that that morning. And I was like, look at you, girl. Look at you, like flicking people off, going in and out. Like you turned into a city driver like that. Can we just go a little faster? Let's go. Like people were driving so slow that morning. And I'm like, what the freak? I was like, like she's an Atlanta driver now. Look at her. She's an Atlanta driver. I always laugh. I would tell my students all the time because traffic gets really bad here in Atlanta. And I would be like sitting in traffic in Atlanta, Georgia, playing chanting music to calm me down while flicking people off going down 75. So, so yes, you conquered. And it's funny, my friend Cindy, who's on this channel sometimes, I was telling her about before you left about some of your fears. And she was like, oh my God, this trip is going to be huge for Stephanie because once she realizes that she can do this, she's going to realize she can do anything. And I saw that shift in you towards the end of the trip. You seemed like completely relaxed about a lot of stuff. And yeah. I do think, a lot, I mean, there's always layers to trauma. And I do think a lot of that was the church that put that fear in you. And even though you've now realized that you're not going to hell, there's not a rapture, you're not going to hell. And B, um, your death day is already determined anyway. So you're not going to leave the earth plane before it's time. I think even though you knew that you had to kind of live out the anxiety that had been implemented into your body yeah. and stress in order to then show yourself that you can actually do this. And, um, yeah. and I was proud of you. Like you, you became, and you had your kid with you, you know, and Tyler traveled well with us too. He was funny. He is Isn't funny. he funny? Let's he talk funny. about that for a second. He's very funny. And I have to give him credit because to be a 15 year old boy, to go on a road trip with your mom, and I keep calling us middle-aged because we are, but I know our life's going to be ex ex expanded and <laughs> I feel like we still look young and cute. But for a 15-year-old, here's he's with his mom and her mom, his mom's friend, and they're walking around pulling tarot cards and dousing. Like I, if I were him, even though I was into that kind of stuff, if I was with my mom, I would have been mortified mortified Which he was to some degree but then he just walk away and go okay i'm out of here for a little bit and he'd go like if we were in the cemetery or something he would just kind of roam and he he would be in um our our view yeah but he would kind of remove himself just a little bit so he felt a little bit more comfortable but um he did really really well and the thing is uh, he he needed this just as much as i did so tyler's been kind of cooped up since I pulled him out of school about a, almost going on two years at this point. And um, that's made it hard for him to make new friends um, and to keep friends that he had previously. And um, so he's kind of felt a little bit out of the loop. And I refuse to send him back to school because the schools have gone off the deep end. I mean, they yeah. were already going off the deep end. He was getting bullied not only by kids, but by his own teachers. So, um, 
um, because of that and because of this requirement and because I didn't know if they were going to, the nurses and the schools were going to force this or anything like that. I snagged them out of school because I was not going to have that. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not materialistic or anything, but there's one, I, I'm very, very, um, you know, I'm very protective, not over material things, but I'm protective over um, people I love. Yeah. And when it comes to being a mom, especially of a child who has gone through hell and back again, um, <clears throat> I, I was not going to have that. Um, and so Tyler got to experience a lot of stuff and he especially loved Washington, DC. He loves to learn about history, especially world war one and world war two. Um, like when I was homeschooling him, we, we did the constitution. He easily learned it. Um, and he's super, super intelligent. Would you say, would you say he's yeah. intelligent? Oh yeah. 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 Very well, wise. Was, I mean, I was like, I kept telling him, I was like, dude, this is like the greatest field trip you're ever going to go on. Yeah. Because you're actually getting, um, the real, well, we're, we're trying to show you the, as much as what we know, because we got to Washington DC, as we said, the book show and as we'll probably go into more detail with Shanti, because Shanti's a, a Tartarian queen. It's very obvious that all those buildings were Tartarian. Oh yeah. Big yeah. time. And I have a and he was so actually, impressed by them. Yes. And I have a question for the cards, actually. Let's, let me ask this. Um, before we get into that, though, let me just verify for all of our viewers. Stephanie is exactly the same off camera as she is on camera, but she's funnier off camera. She made me, Stephanie, you just do things that are, you told me about that about me once too, that I just do things that are funny that I'm not trying to be. I just, the way I, but you do the same thing. <laughs> Can I talk about the toilet situation at Bonnie's house? <laughs> yes. I don't know. So Bonnie, I don't even know if you know this story, but you weren't there. Yes, she does. Time. Okay. She does. I was, I was out in like the living room area at my suitcase and, I, and Stephanie was like, I'm going to go to the bathroom and she's in the bathroom. And all of a sudden I hear her go, no, 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 no. And I started, I was like, what the hell is happening? And she came out and she was like, Tyler clogged the toilet. And so, but I just heard her and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not something you ever want to hear coming from the bathroom. <laughs> like you never, I'm like, you know, Bonnie's not there. Like what did it overflow? Is there like crap on the floor? Like her like, Tyler climbed the toilet. <laughs> and oh, it was so funny. I'm like, no, 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 no. Because I thought it was over. I don't know. I don't know. You came out and I was like doubled over with laughter. I was like, that is not never something you want to hear coming from the bathroom. That is never something you want to hear, especially when it's not your house. <laughs> it's like Bonnie wasn't there. I don't know where the plunger is. Like, is there poop swimming on the floor? Do we have to go like? Well, that's what I was afraid of. I thought like it was going to overflow and I was going to have to clean shit off. The well, here's the thing. Like, I will gladly help you with anything as a person. I will help you carry your bags. But with that situation, I mean, listen, Stephanie. You burst them through <laughs> your luck. hoo -ha. You're on your own. <laughs> You're on your own. That is your child. You wiped his butt as a baby. Carry on. Like I, can, I cannot help you with this. What What cracked me up was my mentality went, oh, yeah, because screaming at the toilet is going to make it any better. <laughs> I'm probably going to go but how many times I learned that that's kind of a habit with Tyler? <laughs> that happens a lot, buddy. Oh, can we talk about him with your your at your mom's house with the bed? Oh, that was funny. Yeah. So when we were at my mom's house, first of all, Tyler found a BB. I'll have to bleep that out. He found one of these, a BB one that my stepdad had. And so that kept him like entertained the whole time. I did not grow up with brothers. I grew up with sisters. Like we were all girls. I have one stepbrother, but I don't really know him that well. But, you know, my sister and I have two stepsisters. <laughs> It was a bunch of like tampons and hair bows in our house growing up, right? It was no, so, and I have a nephew now, so I'm getting used to boy stuff, but seeing how a teenage boy can be so fascinated with that, you really see that. Well, he that, has one at home too, so he knows how to use one. Yeah, yeah. And well, does target practice here at home and then saw that at your mom's and was like, can I heaven. please use? He was in heaven. My mother has this big backyard. He could set up targets. And so I, and it, it really showed you like the energy of the male, the masculine energy that need to protect, which is part of the masculine divine masculine. And he's very that, protective. That is ingrained in men to be able, yeah. it, women protect too, but in a different way. Well, uh, before we get to the bed story, I'm going to tell you another thing about Tyler. I'm leading up to the bed story. Um, Tyler tells on himself. Oh yeah. 
which is hysterical. And my mother thought this was hysterical too. He literally tells on himself. Like, and he and I, I said something to him. He was like, "Well, yeah, I just learned if I go ahead and tell on myself, then the punishment won't be that bad." I was like, "Most kids haven't figured that out yet." But <laughs> anyway, so one day Tyler was out with the, you know, and he had set up coke cans, and he was hitting these coke cans, and I guess one had like hit the house. So he came in to tell on himself that this can had like hit the house. Now. My parents' house is mostly brick. So, and my mother was laughing because she went outside and she was like, nothing happened. Like there was no <laughs> scratch. There was, but he was so concerned. But anyway, so that's just how Tyler is. Like that, I learned that about him. That is one of his really good qualities is that he always just takes responsibility. He's brutally honest about everything, yeah. including himself. Well, he takes responsibility. Yeah, and he does. So, my uh tyler stayed in one guest room stephanie stayed in another guest room i'm here at my parents house and i slept on a day bed in my stepdad's office with really creepy pictures with really creepy pictures sorry bill those are creepy um so I, I was sitting up in the day bed stephanie was never having chit chatting my mom comes in we're all three just talking shooting the shit and then tyler comes walking down the hall and he stops by the door and he looks at my mom he goes i think i'm too fat for the bed that's like <laughs> all he said to my mom was like I think I'm too fat for the bed. Now, first of all, Tyler's not fat. No. And so my mom starts laughing because my mother knew exactly what he was talking about. Stephanie and I had no idea, but my mother knew what he was talking about. Apparently that bed in that back bedroom, spare room is a very old bed. The bedroom's very old. And apparently my mother had been bugging my stepdad. They have like 20 beds in storage, you know, to switch <laughs> it out with. I mean, they're, they're, they're combined families. Like there's a lot of stuff they got in storage. So my mother had been bugging my stepdad to switch out the bed because apparently one of the boards was a little wonky but the fact that tyler came out and was like to my mom i think i'm too fat for the bed like <laughs> just like we were all laughing so hard like oh my god some of the things that come out of that kid's mouth is just hysterical and he can make a good joke yeah he can he made some really good jokes um he did i and then he'll go yeah it took me 30 seconds to come up with that like like he's not very humble about it either it's like Yep, I know. I, I came up with that in 30 seconds because that's how an Asperger's mind works. Like, yeah, just matter of fact, like whatever. Like yeah. this is, yeah. So he's, oh, he's, he's, he's funny. Something. And he traveled and, really, really well. And I will say like, so we, we all stay in the same room in Washington uh, in our hotel with two beds. I was on one bed. Tyler and Stephanie were on another. And that morning before we went out to the city, now I, I know you guys heard us say this on Zublix, Stephanie and I were expecting to walk into like a band of demons. Like we were expecting DC to be really heavy, to be hard energy, all that kind of stuff, which we were very pleasantly surprised, which is if you watched us on Zublix, you would have seen that. You'll see this on Aquarius Rising Africa. So that morning before we went to DC, it was really important to me that we work out because exercise is what flushes energy. And that was my main focus was us getting our bodies really grounded and ready for battle before we walked into DC. And so we decided to do our bar, our bar class. And we did it in kind of like the semi dark because we got up at five to do it. And Tyler was just passed out on the bed. I could hardly even see the screen. Like it was really dark in the room. And so we're like trying not to kick the bed during this workout because like it was a small little cramped in room. That was that was funny. Yeah. And I pick so with the bar classes, as we've talked about, there are a lot of pelvic like thrust that you do, right? Like to work to, to unstick this area. It's a lot of the pulling in of the pelvis. There's a lot of the moving of the hips. And so I told Stephanie, I was like, before we started practicing or exercising, I was like, I found a, a, a an hour workout with minimal pelvic thrusting because I was like, I know that if Tyler wakes up and sees his mom and me, <laughs> I tra traumatizing. he's going to be traumatized, mm. right? No kid wants to see his mother and her middle-aged friend doing that. So, um, so I picked them. I was like, I will have to literally start putting money into his therapy fund if, if he wakes up and sees us doing that, because there is one hour, there's an hour, uh, workout she has that is called the triple X one. It's one of my favorites. It's very sensual. And she moves you in that kind of a way. But I was like, we are not doing that with your, with your kid in the bed. Um, so anyway, so we did, we did our exercises. I worked a little bit with Stephanie on some things. And then we went into DC 
And DC was fantastic. We won't go into too, too, too much because again, you guys check us out on Aquarius Rising Africa on Monday because Monday because I don't want us to have to beat a dead horse. But there was a lot of stuff um, in DC that was very surprising. And I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave either. I, I was almost in tears leaving. It was very emotional. To yeah, leave. it was very emotional to leave. I did not. I, I felt so good in Washington, DC. And I have to say, that and I know this is going to be hard for people who are still really programmed. And if this is triggering, then that's valuable. You know, your, your tr triggers are your golden lotto tickets. Like, look at that study that, you know, we know that there's a pentagram in Washington, DC. However, <laughs> as I've said many, many, many times before, I'm actually going to talk to my friend Cindy about us doing a show on the pentagram because she's more well educated in that than I am. <laughs> again, once again, darkness <clears throat> does not create anything guys. Think about photosynthesis, just, just in nature. Darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can. Even think about the mother's womb. And the, the mother's womb is dark. But what happens when the sperm hits the egg? There's a spark of light. Spark of light. It's yeah. created, even though the baby grows in the womb, that light is what created it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so every single thing that we have on this earth, every symbol, was originally created by the light, including the pentagram. I know that's going to trigger people. If it triggers you, don't project violence onto Stephanie and me. Instead, do your own research. Be, oh, this is triggering me. Let me go do my own research. So the way these buildings are set up in DC in this formation, they're obviously Tartarian buildings. Obviously, we've pulled cards on this numerous times. They are Tartarian buildings, and they were obviously set up in a formation to generate an energy of healing before, before they, so they tell us that these buildings were built at a certain time in our history. That's, that's bullshit, guys. It, it's so common sense at this point. We didn't have power tools until what, the middle of the 1800s. So how the hell were these buildings built? When they tell us they were built, they weren't. They were already there. They were already there. Actually, let's let's ask the cards that Stephanie were the buildings. I don't know how to ask the cards. This was DC already there. Was it already established before America was yeah. created? Yeah, we've been there for a while. Yeah. I have the star, the justice, and the hangman card, which is telling me they were there for a while. Um, and um, they were powerful buildings with that king of um, pentacles. But it's like the hangman would tell me they've been there for a long, long time. And I'm actually getting from the star card ancient. Because, I mean, they look ancient. Yeah, they look definitely ancient. I, I don't even, at this point, guys, and I'm a history buff, at this point, guys, I don't even believe the American Revolution happened. No. I think it's all bullshit. Um, yeah, they, they, they took the buildings and then they um, reversed, uh, they, they manipulated the history with this three of swords and this five of wands, and then they created their own narrative behind it with that Wheel of Fortune card. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I, I, you know, I, for a long time, believed the narrative that DC was going to be taken down completely. And this was before I was educated on Tartaria. And this was before going to Washington, DC myself. My intuition is telling me that there, that that place has been cleaned out. And that place is going to be a place of healing. They're not going to get rid of DC. That is what my intuition is telling me. What about you, Stephanie? My intuition is telling me the same, like, I couldn't imagine all of the, like, there are maybe one monument and one building, and that would be the Jefferson Memorial and the White House that will be torn down, I believe. Yeah. The White House, honestly, was like, whatever. Wah, wah. Nothing yeah. special about it. And you could hardly even get to it on, on the side of the fence that we were on. And it, it did not look Tartarian to me at all. It's newer. It looked like they tried to mimic it, just like we looked at the um, Federal Reserve, and that they it looks like the, the controllers tried to imitate the architecture of the Tartarian buildings and did it. Yeah. It was very square compared yeah. to all the intricate architecture of the yeah. pillars and everything of the other buildings. Um, and so I, I personally believe that the White House is a nefarious portal and they need right. to close that down if they haven't already. 
the Jefferson Memorial also felt very, very off. Very that felt evil. worse than the White House did. Yeah, that felt worse than the White House. Now, David Zublick made a point on um, Dark Outpost yesterday saying it's actually been sinking. That was the only place we saw that we walked on foot and saw that was under construction of some kind. Yeah. And there was a creepy statue of Jefferson and, and Tyler even intuitively got and we didn't know until after the fact, we both felt something very, very uh, evil there. But he was like, when we left there, he he said to us, oh, my God, I, when we walked in and I saw that statue, I wanted to walk right back out. I did, too. I did not. I mean, that was I mean, we were laughing. We ended up walking about 12 miles that day. And I know that because Tyler's phone kept up with it. Um, so we were pretty I mean, for, for a, a day full of labor, we were having a fun time. Like we were laughing. We were joking around and then we got to the Jefferson Memorial, which was the last place we went to. And all of us just closed down. We and got we agitated the, too. We had come from the Lincoln Memorial, which I think we need to focus on the Lincoln Memorial with Aquarius Rising Africa. Cause I yeah. would like to hear. So I'm just going to leave that for now on this channel. You guys fall, come on Monday and join us there. If you can't join us to the live show, I'll share the link after we do it. So you can watch that there. But the, the Jefferson Memorial, I mean, I felt like I was going to have a panic attack. I, I got agitated. I was getting like, I could feel myself feeling like irritable. Tyler was irritable. Tyler got really irritable in there. I mean, he held it together. Okay. But he, he felt very irritable in there as well. And, um, like I didn't want to stay there very long. We were like all three of us and it took a while. We, we, after we, we kind of got stuck inside, which again, we'll go into more detail on Aquarius rising Africa. But once we got out, we made ourselves our way back to the wharf. And it, I think it took us sitting down at that pretzel stand to really like get our, get our emotions back in check. Cause all of us were like, angry. well, you also had to pee very badly after that. And, and I ended up going to a porta potty. That was, just, <laughs> we couldn't find clean porter potties in the area. And then you realized that they hadn't been cleaned in over a month. Yeah. I went inside. I finally went to the, well, the first time we went to the porta potty, both Stephanie, and I went in when we both turned around and walked out. We're like, Nope, there was like feces everywhere. Um, and then we got stuck and we couldn't get, we're like, we'll just wait until we get out of here. But we got stuck inside of it. And I was like, I have to go pee. I'm going to literally wet my pants. I'm going to embarrass the shit out of Tyler by being his mom's friend who wet her pants in Washington, DC. So I finally went inside a porta potty. I just like closed my nose, closed my eyes, but I was staring at the door and they had this chart, this calendar from the last time somebody cleaned the space was, and it was, uh, June 11th, which of course 11 is a number we're seeing everywhere. So I was like, Oh, but I walked out and I was like, nobody's been here almost a month to clean these things. Even the porta potty workers don't even want to come to this freaking property with a Jefferson Memorial. But let me ask this. So I have two questions now. So the Constitution of the United States of America that supposedly was written, you know, the end of the 1700s, all that kind of stuff, was that actually the Constitution of Tartaria? That's a good question. And not because I don't believe anything of what they've told us about the American Revolution. I don't even think our ancestors came over here on boats at all. And then they gave credit to Jefferson, right? No, Jefferson is the Declaration of Independence, which I'm going to talk about next. I'm going to have a question about that. Because the real constitution is very common law. It's very like just, you know, live and let live. You don't mess with me. I don't mess with you. We, we respect each other. Which sounds very Tartarian. I believe so. I have the, the justice card, which means that it was in balance with the laws of the universe is what I'm getting. And we have the lover's card also with it. So I'm getting like, um, if the controllers made it, it would not be of love. But we have the justice card here with the lover's card. So that's telling me it was definitely law of the land, law of the universe, which Tartarians went by. Um, I believe there were some changes made to it because we do oh, yeah. have the power we, we have like We have like three constitutions now. Yeah, they've, they've modified it. Yeah. Yeah. And there was some things in it that are very dissatisfying. Um, and, and there's lot like things that would make things like uh, put setbacks in our life kind of a thing with these two cards. Yeah. So let me so. ask this, the Declaration of Independence, we were taught that this was a like a breakup letter with Mother England. However, if we're looking at Gog and Magog was... And I think after visiting the Jefferson Memorial, I don't think there was anything good about Thomas Jefferson at all. Mm -hmm. um, 
was that an actual letter of independence to break away from Tartaria? Written by the Satanist. No, I think it broke away before. And then they manipulated it because I had the Wheel of Fortune card. And no, it was a breakaway from a karmic tie from the controllers or the people who, you know, this is collaboration. So then it wouldn't have been written by Jefferson. And then we have the death card here. So I feel like something separate. I'm getting it has something to do with when the, the end of Tartaria. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Did the control when they released Lucifer and his minions from wherever the end of Tartaria, the mud floods came, all that kind of stuff. Was that a declaration from the Satanist saying to basically God or the off worlders, like we're done with you. We're going to rule this planet now. That's yeah. That that's, yeah. It, it was definitely nefarious. Yeah. Which yeah. is sad because we were all racist as Americans and it was like one of the greatest things ever written. But now it's like everything we've been told is an absolute fucking lie. And I never want to, I, I never want to look at the face of Thomas Jefferson again after being in that memorial. Like, yeah, I, don't it was awesome. with him. I have never, I mean, that was, I almost started crying in there. Like I literally, I could not handle it in there. It was awful. It was awful, which we had the exact opposite reaction, the Lincoln Memorial, which again, we'll get into more detail with Shanti and Mornay on Aquarius Rising Africa, because they have a lot of insight into Tartaria. So that's why I'm kind of holding off of that information. So you guys don't have to watch the same thing over and over and over and over again. Um, so anyway, is there anything, um, so can we, we, so we know that Washington DC is, is not geograph geographically on a swamp. I know that's a theory that's out there, but there's no way. It's not on a swamp. I it's think that was as part of their narrative. To be honest with you, like I've been on a swamp before. Yeah. Like, yeah, the Dr. thing is, yeah. the way I look at it, <clears throat> you have all these Tartarian buildings. They weigh a ton. They're made of marble. They're made of very, very heavy stone. And the thing is, um, you know, I'm just going to go based off of uh, when I when I was growing up in the house I grew up on. We grew up on my house was up on a hill. Now, at the bottom of the hill was a was marshland, swampland. Um, and my neighbors were not supposed to build a house on that land because they were told that the structure of the house would probably start to cave in, have problems, flood their basement and such. So they still built anyways. Um, and I'm surprised it was done. And they had major, major problems. They, every spring they had to have a company come out and, um, fix their basement for them after that. So, um, I look at it, you have these structures that are megatons heavy, right? How long have they been there there? Like, yeah, they're, they're been, not been there there. Right. You like how I worded that? Be been there for. Um, there is no way, especially looking at the Capitol building and the enormity of it, that it would last that long and structurally be okay without repairs every single year if that was on swampland like there's no way and i know people say that well there are things underground that hold back the water and everything no it doesn't matter it doesn't yeah. matter swampland is swampland and yeah. the thing is um nature is a little bit more stronger in a sense than Man. mankind in its form right now that's one of the so when you are a writer that is one of the laws of writing when you're creating a story, man versus nature, nature always went. Hello, old man in the sea. So regardless of what you do to try to protect from nature, nature's <clears throat> always going to win. And that is not a swamp, guys. I, I In the South, we have a lot of swamps. We have a lot of bayous down here. A lot of them. I think yeah. I cracked you up when I told you our swamp in Georgia, a big one was the Okefenokee Swamp, like the name of the Okefenokee, but it's down South Georgia. Like it's, you know, like if you want to hide a body, that's where you hide the body, swamp land. Like that's, you're not going to find it again. That's not a swamp guys. It's not a swamp. And um, so yeah, I think structures would sink. Yeah. And so to end this episode up again, you guys follow us on Monday with Aquarius rising Africa, 10 o'clock Eastern time where we go, we're going to go into more detail. I'll put a link to their channel down in the description box below. If you cannot catch us on Monday, if you're working or you can't catch the show, I will share it onto my community tab once the show is finished. But to end this episode, Stephanie, let's ask, are they going to, use dc potentially as a healing area 
or a healing place, place of healing? Not at first, but I believe it will get to that point. Um, so at first, it looks like it's going to be blocked off for quite a bit, probably for safety reasons. So we have this two of swords. So something will be blocked off. Um, Knight of Pentacles is telling me they might have a lot of military personnel there. You know, oh, your voice just went out. You're, you're, they might have a lot of military personnel there. Yeah, I think they're going to have some sort of military something there with that. Knight of Pentacles doesn't necessarily mean... Um, military but that's what i'm intuitively getting with that and so they might close it off clean up yeah i feel like they're i feel like it is already cleaned up for the most part but i feel like when things start to come out like uh, where do people go to protest oftentimes is washington dc because you know you have the um the supreme court there and everything which we did see a little bit of which was super super pathetic for right. Those women who think it's okay to remove um, something out of their stomach, um, you know, I don't know why it's so such a big deal to, never mind, I'm not going to go into that. But anyways, so I do have the Queen of Cups here. So, I, you know, I am getting that the Queen of Cups, uh, Queen of Cups can be a very healing card because Cups are emotions and the Queen of Cups is very emotionally stable. Um, but yeah, I mean, it. so... At first, so this is like entrapment or imprisonment and stuff like that. I'm just gonna block it off. You know, <clears throat> I have I, I've been being told that off worlders are gonna come down too and help them clean it up as well. Yeah, and I actually witnessed off worlders landing on the White House grounds on a live camera footage of the White House, like back in March of 2021, and then I saw it again like a few months later. So yeah. I know they have been landing on that property, um, probably cleaning it up and everything like that. Now, we do have um, <coughs> Seven of Pentacles. Now, Seven of Pentacles is like charity work. Um, it's um, giving it, It's giving to the people. So we could look at that as um, uh, an area where people are being um, given nope. support and help. We do have the page of cups. Page of cups is a love offering. So we can look at that as healing. But the biggest thing is I have a 10 of cups here. This was the last card that popped out. So 10 of cups is telling me that it will be um, a, a healing center of some kind, or it's going to help families out, or it's going to become more family oriented. That's telling me it's not going to go down completely. No. They might take some structures down, but they're not going to take the whole city out. No, and we have to remember this, guys. If we took out everything that the controllers had contaminated, we would have, We'd nothing, have nothing left. We'd have nothing. So it was ours, and I, I feel like we were healed there, Stephanie. Oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. Believe... I will go more into depth with it, but yeah. I mean, the Lincoln Memorial, definitely, like, I was like, yeah. Whoa. Please join us on Monday with Shantae Morning, guys. We're going to go into way more detail. <laughs> we'll also go back over the Georgia Guidestones as well. Um, which we talked about with Zooplik. And if you've been following us along on Twitter, we're very well aware that we were just there cleansing the land right before the, <laughs> the stones went down. So that was incredible. That was like, holy shit. When, when um, you got that text. Of, yeah. About I was that. Like, holy crap. But that just goes to show you guys, like we are the storm. We're the storm. All of us. All we of us to together. Not one person individually. We have to work as a unit. We have to yeah. work together simultaneously. And even if that means just putting our frequency out there of love, if that's all you're doing, then you are contributing some of your energy to help heal the land. And that's why we're all scattered all over the world. And we're not together under one like area because yeah. then what good is that going to do? We're like a crystal grid of healing. So if you're, if you're an old soul chosen one who came to incarnate to help heal the earth and help humanity out, yeah, you're not going to be around like-minded people, but there's a reason for that. So look at it as a blessing rather than um, a curse. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I know, I know I'm not going to be in Atlanta for much longer. That I do know. I don't know when I'm actually leaving Atlanta, but I know I'm not going to be here for much longer, but I know I had to be here for a while um, we're all going to be moving around. We're all moving pieces right now. And, um, we're all you contractually, we are the white hats guys, all of us. Yeah. All of us together as one loving unit. And, um, that's something to be humble about, but yet proud of at the same time. Like, you know, good job. You've stuck this out. You're stronger than you think. Cause if your soul wasn't strong enough, you wouldn't have agreed to this task. For sure. 
Well, guys, again, join us on Aquarius Rising Africa on Monday. Um, just a little channel note. So they're not, there isn't going to be a Monday mystery this Monday. Again, I, as I said in my update video, I have a lot of footage to go through and to organize of, of other, other places we visited as well. And also, I think I'm going to have, after this week, a couple of Mondays where our friend Natalie is going to I was just thinking be, that. Yeah, I was just thinking be, about that. I need to con connect with her because I think she's going to be a guest presenter for Monday Mystery because her channel is very similar to mine in the way that she researches. And so um, I'm going to have her come on and be a guest presenter for Monday Mysteries for a couple of episodes. So that should be really, really, really fun. But um, thank if you guys don't know who Natalie is, she's been on my channel a few times and we presented the Alaskan tri uh, Bermuda Triangle and um, the Pyramid in Alaska because she's from Alaska. So she's um, big into researching about her state because there's so many mysteries there. And so what she does is she deep dives into the research of her home state of Alaska and trying to figure out and get to the bottom of things. And I pulled the cards on those different yeah. mysteries. So, so it's I, be an awesome collaboration. Yeah. So that Monday mystery will be coming up in the next couple of weeks, which Stephanie, I will both be here too, because she'll be guest presenting. I'll be hosting and Stephanie will be pulling the cards and I'm going to put a link to her channel down in the description box below as well, guys, because she's very similar. If you like my stuff, you'll like her stuff. She's very similar to the way that I, I present stuff and, and our, our interests are very similar. So, um, Anyway, guys, uh, as I said yesterday, next week, besides Monday Mystery, we'll be getting back to our regular schedule with the Tuesday Magdalene Manuscript, the Wednesday Sophia Code, and I'll be back to doing my coffee chats with Catherine as well. But hang tight, because as I said, Stephanie and I are not done traveling. We've got some other plans up our sleeves that we're not going to, we're not putting any dates out or anything like that yet, but we do have some other locations that we are about to go um, explore, and hopefully we'll have the same... Um, interesting outcome as we did with washington dc oh tomorrow i will be filming with stephanie and bonnie for uh the isis hidden isis temple we went to in tennessee as well so stay tuned for that guys um thank you so much for sitting through this with us um if i didn't say it enough stephanie you also are you're awesome on camera but you're also way awesome off of camera as well you're same. very much the, the same person though there's no there's no mask on for her on camera literally and figuratively what you see is what you get um and so uh we can't I'm wait with you meet, say we can't wait, wait meet, meet you guys too that are watching us and um yeah so hold on guys because july is turning into a very interesting month and i'm here yes. for it i'm here for it so anyway we will talk to you guys soon bye guys bye